Welcome to the Great Plains Association for College Admissions Counseling Virtual College Fair. We're so excited to have you participating in this event. We have, oh, sorry. We have some fantastic schools here with us today. My name is Nashira and I'll be your facilitator. Before we get started, a few housekeeping items. Your camera and microphone are off so the panelists cannot see or hear you. You can use the Q&A button on your screen to type your questions to our presenters at any time. This is just one of many different sessions happening. So be sure to check out the schedule on the website. This presentation is being recorded and will be available at strivescan.com forward slash forward slash GPACAC. I'd now like to turn it over to our first presenter, Marquette University. Hello everybody, my name is Mario Walker and I'm an admission counselor here at Marquette University. So I'm just gonna go briefly through the things that we offer here at Marquette University. Um, this is who we are at a glance. We have an average class size of 23 students. We're a very medium sized institution. We have a 14 to one student to faculty ratio. We have about 8,000 undergraduate students on campus. We have over 80 different majors. We're located in Milwaukee, Wisconsin. And then we have over 325 student organizations that students are able to be involved in. Um, a little bit more about Marquette is that we are a Catholic Jesuit institution. No, you do not have to be Catholic to go to the institution, but we do welcome all religious backgrounds, but we do practice a lot of Catholic traditions through our time here at Marquette. Here is more about the academics. Um, Marquette is a direct admit institution. So when you apply to Marquette, you're automatically reviewed not only for the university, but for one of these seven colleges that we have here. Um, as you can see, this listed here, our College of Arts and Sciences. Um, it's really known for all the outside the classroom research. That's what all of these majors and all these colleges really allow for students is getting that hands-on tangible work done outside the classroom while also taking those classes inside the classroom. But our arts and scientists has a award-winning advising center, which assists students in not only double majoring, but also next, what's going on next within their professional world. Our College of Business Administration and Communication are go hand in hand. There's a lot of interchangeable things within these two colleges. One key thing is that Marquette is located in Milwaukee, as I stated before, and we're close to a lot of Fortune 500 companies, which allows for all these partnerships that the College of Business and Communication provide for students to uh, take on internships. Our College of Education is one of, is one of the colleges where students are required to double major in this college students become urban educators and really get that outside the classroom experience from day one on campus. Um, you really get to go to other schools and shadow and become a teacher assistant and then ultimately teaching your own class. Our College of Engineering is very hands-on. All students are required to co-op. So they do, they are able to work as an engineer. They're able to get paid as an engineer and they don't take classes during that period. But we do have that hands-on work with our College of Engineering. And then finally, our College of Health Sciences and our College of Nursing go hand in hand. We have access to clinicals. We partner with a lot of Milwaukee area hospitals. We have our own simulation labs on campus. Um, and then we also have our own cadaver lab here on Marquette's campus as well. Finally, you can see all the different professional schools we have. We have the only school of dentistry here in Wisconsin. We have one of two law schools um, here in Wisconsin as well. And then we have a lot of accelerated degree programs here. Within the college, uh, process at Marquette as far as academics, you do not, you are able to transfer out and into pretty much any of these colleges with the exception of nursing. That's our direct entry program and it's very rigorous. I um, mean, you're only able to be admitted and into nursing as a freshman at Marquette. All right, now here's a timeline of the application process. So with the application process, our application is open right now. Um, we do have a priority deadline of December 1st, which is the date that you see there. Um, you can still apply after December 1st, but we really encourage students to do the December 1st deadline because we more accept on a space basis. Um, with the application process, you can apply to the Marquette via the Common App or you can apply to us via the Marquette University website and going on our website to find the application. Um, and with your application, uh, we need your high school transcript. We ask for extracurriculars and activities list. There's also an essay component that we attach to it because we really want to learn about you, um, not just like as far as academics, but about 
what you are involved in and why, you know, the way you are um, and why you're interested in Marquette as well. And finally, we are a test optional university, which means you do not have to send in your test scores. It's completely up to you. Um, so our mantra here is whatever you feel will put your best foot forward. That's what we encourage you to do here at Marquette University, but you are not required at all to send in your test scores. Finally, you can kind of stay, you can stay in contact with us, specifically with me as well. Um, my name is Mario Walker, as I introduced before. Um, there's my email address, um, and then there's my phone number as well, if you want to reach me that way. Um, I am a Marquette alum as well, which I failed to mention, but there's a lot of different student experiences that Marquette has provided for me, as I am right now, after graduating, now working with Marquette and being able to share my experience. Um, so I really encourage everyone to maybe take a look at our application, at least fill it out, or maybe even uh, visit us on our website or marquette.edu slash explore um, to schedule a visit. You can schedule a campus tour. We are accepting in-person tours right now, but if you're comfortable with doing a virtual visit, we do have virtual options still available as well. So thank you all for listening. Let me know if you have any questions. Thank you, Marquette University. Looks like University of Missouri is ready to go. Good afternoon, students and families. Thank you so much for joining us today. My name is John Emery, and I'm here with the University of Missouri Office of Admissions. I'm an admissions rep at uh, Mizzou, as we like to go by. And I'm going to kick things off with a few of my favorite fun facts about Mizzou, some things that really make our university special. We are the oldest public university west of the Mississippi River. We are 182 years young, so close to two centuries of history and traditions on campus. A few of the more notable historic points, we're the home to the first school of journalism in the entire world, the oldest honors college in America, and the birthplace of a very famous tradition that you probably already love to celebrate. Homecoming started at Mizzou way back in 1911. We are credited by the NCAA as having created that modern tradition, and it's really that iconic part of being a Mizzou Tiger. Uh, a few other fun facts about Mizzou. We are a registered botanic garden. So campus is a gorgeous place to live. You're literally moving to a park and uh, we're frequently listed among the most beautiful in America. And you're right in the heart of downtown Columbia, Missouri, which is just right in the middle of the Show Me State, about a two hour drive from Kansas City and two hour drive from St. Louis along I-70. Um, you're right in the heart of downtown, as I mentioned, and we're frequently listed among the best college towns in America. And so you do have that uh, sort of classic college town vibe, all the restaurants and stores, the galleries, the trails, the music venues, they're just a few blocks from your dorm. The university itself is the largest in the state of Missouri. We are a public flagship institution. Um, so we're the lead research school in Missouri. And we do have about 31,000 students on campus, including approximately 23 and a half thousand undergraduates. Um, and our student body is a very diverse and dynamic group. We are, uh, Tigers come from every state in America, about 110 countries around the world and every county in Missouri. So all different backgrounds represented all different futures ahead of our students. It's an incredible place to spend your college years. We are also a very rare combination in higher ed. There are only about 15 schools out there that can claim this last bullet point. We're a member of the Association of American Universities or the AAU. These are the top 65 research schools in the US and Canada. And we're also a public land grant institution, which means you're getting that world-class research environment at Mizzou with the price tag of a public school with the highest commitment to access and affordability. So pretty unusual combo. As far as admission to Mizzou goes, the first thing we look for is a strong college prep curriculum. We like to see these 17 classes on your transcript that you're on pace to complete these when you graduate. Um, four years of English and math, three science and social studies, two of the same foreign language and a fine art or music credit. And the next thing we'll look for on the traditional application is your highest uh, super score ACT or SAT super score in addition to your class rank or GPA. And we do use the sliding scales which allows for a lower test score and a higher rank or GPA or vice versa to allow for some flexibility there. We do have a test optional application available seniors 
Juniors, if you're tuning in today, stay tuned. We'll make that call at the end of the year if this will be a permanent option. Right now, it's a temporary option from the uh, pandemic. But if you do apply as test optional seniors, we're still looking for those 17 classes I just mentioned. We're still looking at your class rank and your GPA. But instead of a test score, we will ask you a few additional questions about involvement, uh, leadership, things of that nature. We do have what's called rolling admission. So the application opens August 1st, your senior year. And as soon as you do your part, you complete that app, we get your transcript from your school, you're in line for evaluation, and you will hear back from us in typically just a few weeks. You can apply from August 1st all the way through the end of June. But obviously, if you get the ball rolling in the fall, it's going to uh, help you maximize your financial aid eligibility. Some things that we're especially well known for at Mizzou, we have one of the best schools of journalism in the world. Students also come to Mizzou for business and engineering and healthcare uh, majors pretty frequently. But across the board, we have 300 plus degree programs, um, 600 uh, student clubs and organizations, 20 D1 teams that compete in the SEC, the pinnacle of college athletics. And we have one of the nation's most successful esports teams. Um, now, Regardless of what your academic home is at Mizzou, something you'll find throughout all of our degrees on campus is what we call the Missouri Method. This is our commitment that you're building a professional resume alongside that world-class AAU degree. So no matter what your future academic home is, you're going to leave us with that competitive edge because you've been involved with research or internships or experiential learning of some sort. In fact, we have across the board 300 majors. We have a 93.5% successful outcome uh, rate within six months. So our graduates are exceptionally well prepared to go out and get those jobs. We're also frequently called one of the top best buy schools in America. We spend about 140 million on grants and scholarships annually, and that includes academic merit scholarships based on uh, just those few things from your admission application, so your test score, GPA, ACT. We do evaluate test optional students for merit scholarships as well. Several hundred competitive scholarships, most of them due December 1st, so that priority deadline, keep an eye on that seniors. And we have one of the most user-friendly residency programs in America. So coming to us from Oklahoma, Kansas, and Nebraska, it is very easy to gain in-state tuition your sophomore year forward if you don't already pay in-state tuition through merit scholarships your freshman year. And uh, that will save you about $55,000 your sophomore, junior, or senior year combined. Last thing I want to say is come and see us. We would love to host you. We have uh, regular daily visits throughout the calendar year, as well as virtual options. When you come to a campus visit, let us know what you want to study, and we will facilitate a departmental visit as well. I'm going to hang out in the chat, so if you have additional questions, please let me know. <clears throat> Excuse me. Otherwise, thank you so much for your time. Have a wonderful day. Thank you, University of Missouri. Uh, Goldsmith University of London. <clears throat> All right. Hello, uh, my name is Will. I'm the international officer at Goldsmiths University of London. I'm personally based in Brooklyn, New York, um, but the university itself is located in Southeast London uh, in the UK. We were founded in 1891 and we are a top tier public research institution in the UK. Uh, we've been a member of the University of London since 1904. We have around 10,000 students on our campus. Uh, it's a very diverse population, nearly a, a little over a third of our population comes from outside of the UK. Um, we have a very sizable um, first generation population on campus. We also are the a university with the largest proportion of LGBTQ plus identifying students in the UK. Um, we have likewise implemented a Green New Deal on campus and we are committing to carbon neutrality by 2025. And we should be the first university in the UK to achieve this goal um, if we are. Uh, on time. So our campus is located about 15 minutes southeast of the city center uh, of London. We have a single site campus, so all of your undergraduate coursework and support is located inside that orange line there. We do have halls of residence located on campus and also just off campus, so it's usually no more than a 10 minute walk to get to your courses. Our train station, New Cross Gate, is located right on top of our campus, and that will take you right into the city center uh, in about 10 to 15 minutes. 
very easy access to the rest of the continent as well. We're about 45 minutes from Gatwick Airport and an hour from Heathrow. Um, we also are about a half hour away from the major train stations in London, which can take you all over the country uh, and also down to Paris and Amsterdam via the channel. And London itself has uh, amazing things to do. There's the West End for theater, plenty of sports, um, particularly football um, or what we call soccer here in the US. Um, there's about 45% of the city is parkland. So it's a wonderful place to escape the urban uh, chaos that London sometimes is. Our academics uh, are focused on the arts and humanities of which we're a top 100 university in the world for those subjects. Um, also social sciences and management and business. Um, we have eight subjects in the world's top 50, including media communications and art and design for which the university is very well known. Uh, we also have eight subject areas in the UK's top 30. And we recently were ranked ninth in the UK for research intensity. And Goldsmiths has about 55 research centers and units on campus. And we do encourage students to undertake undergraduate research from year one. Education in England is slightly different from the US. So we actually have three year bachelor's degree programs. So that is slightly faster than a US bachelor's degree, uh, which can be a cost savings. Since it's a shorter degree, there's no general education or core curriculum, so you do apply directly to a degree program. So um, there's unfortunately no undecided entry into a university in England. We also do a post-study work visa in the UK, which will allow you to remain in the country for up to two years after graduation. Here is a non-exhaustive listing of our academic programs. We have around 75 undergraduate majors in total spread across our three faculties of arts and humanities, professional studies, science and technology, and our culture and society faculty. Uh, some popular programs that Americans typically gravitate toward are our various psychology programs, uh, our computer science programs, which includes games programming and digital arts computing, uh, we also have a, a really well-known business school for economics, marketing, management, entrepreneurship, um, music and theater, art and design, and creative writing are also extremely popular. Our application is on UCAS, which is the University and College Application Service. This is the application that is used to apply to all schools in the UK. As I mentioned before, it is a direct application to degree programs. Goldsmiths this year is test optional, though I do not know if we will extend that beyond this uh, academic year. Um, we do require a 3.0 GPA to apply. Applications this year close on 26th of January for priority deadline, uh, but we do accept rolling applications till 30th of June. I do strongly recommend applying by the priority deadline, however, to ensure you, uh, you are accepted to the program that you've chosen and also that there's no delays in visa processing or anything like that. Um, some portfolios uh, or interviews are required for, for a bit of our programs. And we do require um, a personal statement that's more focused on academic interests than a personal narrative like the Common App essay. Tuition ranges from around 16,000 to 23,000 uh, pounds, which kind of translates to a total cost, total cost of attendance of around 36 to 39,000 US dollars, which is all inclusive. Um, that includes round trip flights, living costs, accommodation, tuition, um, transportation costs once you're in London, and uh, anything else really that you could probably think of. We do allow students to work in the UK while they're on their student visa. So that is a good way to offset visa costs. And we also do, uh, sorry, tuition costs. And we do also accept federal loans from the US government. Uh, and we do provide a limited amount of international scholarships. Halls of residence are located um, really close by to campus. We have eight halls in total that are mixed gender. Uh, we do guarantee accommodation for students in their first year. And after that, they typically move into housing that's private uh, flat share or apartment shares around Southeast London. Suite style living. And we also do have shared kitchens and living spaces in our suites. Um, so there's no meal plans on our campus. Students will can, can use their own kitchen and they'll typically have their own room with their own bathroom as well. So slightly different from, uh, from communal living in US dormitories. And um, with that, I'll be handing it over to Max University. I'll be happy to answer any questions in the chat as well, uh, but thank you so much. Thank you, Goldsmith uh, University of London, IE University. All right, hello everybody. Just get this set up here. I hope everybody is doing well today. Super excited to talk to you. Um, we're gonna stay in Europe. 
Um, I'm here to talk to you about IE University, which is located in Spain. Uh, my name is Micah, and I also went to IE. I'm from the US, didn't speak any Spanish, so again, happy to connect with you today. Um, just some quick facts, I won't go through all of them about Spain. Um, Spain is the second most visited country in the entire world after France, um, and Spanish is the second most spoken language in the world. Um, you'll find commonly in Europe, most people speak, you know, on roughly, you know, three to four languages. So Spaniard's second most spoken language is English. So if you are uh, looking at studying abroad, Spain is definitely one of the most affordable options in Europe. It's also the second biggest country in the EU. And a lot of it really is comparable to um, maybe like the West Coast, California. They've got beaches, they've got mountains, they've got wine country, um, but Spain is known for their vibrant nightlife. Um, Spanish people love being outdoors. There's something for everyone, anywhere from sports, um, arts, culture, traveling. They also have the third largest transportation system in the world. So if you wanna go to the UK for a weekend, Portugal, France, you can hop on a train or a quick flight. Um, they're also known for clubs and uh, different festivals like Don Latino. Um, so what's unique about IE is you have two locations in Spain, yet one experience. So if you're somebody who um, considers yourself passionate for travel, you're really excited to learn about different cultures, you would love to learn a new language like Spanish, um, Spain might be a great place at IE University for you. Um, our first campus is actually in a city that is more rural called Segovia. Um, it's up in the mountains. It's kind of that picturesque, rom romantic, uh, medieval type feeling in a way. Um, our campus was built in 1218 and it is protected by the United Nations. So if anybody here wants to study international relations, this is the school to go to. You'll be working on a lot of projects with them on either campus. Um, the other campus that we have will be in the capital of Spain, which is Madrid. We just built a brand new campus that opened in September called the IE Tower. It's the third tallest um, university in the world and the first and only high rise university uh, in all of Europe. Um, it's an amazing place to study. I studied in Madrid. It's a city that never sleeps. There's always something to do. Um, it's absolutely um, amazing. Um, we're also known as one of the world's most international and diverse universities. Um, so, Everybody coming from all over the world um, make up almost 75% of our student body. We've got over 140 nationalities on campus. Um, there are over 45 languages spoken on campus and we have a total number of about 6,000 undergraduates. Uh, we do accept any kind of education system. So if you're studying the American diploma with like AP classes, or the IB or French baccalaureate, et cetera, you can definitely apply to IE, but the most exciting part is everything is taught in English. So again, if you don't speak any Spanish or any other languages, that is totally okay. Spain is a really, really easy country to move into um, if you don't speak any other languages. Um, but IE in essence, you know, we are known for entrepreneurship. We are a business school at heart. Um, and for our practical learning methodology. So if you love learning, by doing, working with companies, you have shadowing options, uh, mentorship programs, um, and we've got a wide range of different degrees, and I'll have that on another slide. We're also known for technology and innovation, um, things like simulation learning, where you actually get to learn in a real life environment that could happen in a professional work setting. Um, we also introduce AI and virtual reality uh, learning, like with goggles in all of our classrooms, and we're known for humanities and absolutely sustainability. Um, we are highly ranked in Europe. We're number one in Spain, seventh in Europe, and top 20 worldwide. Um, what's really unique is your degree is globally recognized. So whether you study law with us, business, computer science, and artificial intelligence, um, you'll most likely have a job um, either in another country, if that's a goal of yours, you can always come back to the US um, within six months. So 95% of our students find a job within six months. And because IE is so well known globally, we have a lot of partnerships with different companies that actually come to our campus and recruit them before they graduate. And again, entrepreneurship, um, Every year differences, but it's usually between eight to 15% of our graduating student class will graduate with their own company. Um, so again, these are gonna be the degrees that we offer. Um, just, you know, a 
quick snapshot of what ones that are super popular. Law, because we have a partnership with Northwestern here. So if you want to be a lawyer, it's a great route to go. It's a three, two program. You get it done in five years. Whereas you stay in the US and study law and to become a practicing lawyer after you take the bar, it'll take seven to eight. Um, business administration, of course, international relations, um, comp sci, and then all of our dual degrees are five-year programs, but they're all extremely popular. They give a lot more options and avenues in terms of people who have more interests um, and don't wanna be limited to, to one um, field of study. But the idea is when you come to IE throughout the years that you are with us, it really is giving you a lot of exposure and, and opportunities to build your own path. So what can I do with the communications degree? What can I do with the business degree? What, what sector can I go into? So we've got different options for you here. Um, I would love to stay in touch and talk more about our on-campus internships with top companies all over the world, um, as well as international exchanges. So most of our students go to study abroad and then study abroad again. And then of course we have a vibrant campus life, sports, clubs, you name it, we have everything. Um, I'm happy to stay connected as I'm here to help you with your application and we offer a lot of financial aid. All in cost without any aid will be under 40K um, and uh, top three passports are American, French and British. So again, I'll drop my stuff in the chat and thank you again for listening. Thank you, IE University. We'll now have the University of Kansas. Okay. Okay, hello everyone. My name is Emily Cockrum. I am the admissions representative from the University of Kansas. I'm so excited to talk to you all today. Um, so I just wanted to start out talking about, you know, what are, who are Jayhawks? What, what is KU? And uh, this is a breakdown of our student population. So we, we consider ourselves a mid-sized institution. We do have 19,000 undergraduate students, uh, big number, big, uh, large student population, but still the possibility to see a familiar face walking down Jayhawk Boulevard, which you can sort of see in my background here. Um, so this is a breakdown of our um, average ACT GPA breakdown of a student at KU. This is not the requirement to get into KU, but this is just what our student population is looking like. We have about a 40% out of state uh, student population, which is pretty impressive knowing that even if you are from the Kansas City area, from Missouri, Kansas, uh, Nebraska, that area, you're still going to find those uh, students that are from all over the country, all over the world. We do have a 26% uh, student population of students of color. While we are very proud of that number, we are the mo most diverse uh, public institution in University of Can or in Kansas, um, we are still trying to improve that number, obviously. So the, a few things I wanted to talk about here in this short presentation are just the different differentiators that make uh, KU worth knowing, uh, worth talking about. So that's the AAU, the City of Lawrence, and the Jayhawk identity. So uh, the AAU, as we've heard from other institutions here today, is um, the Association of American Universities, KU is one of only 36 public institutions that are a part of this. And, um, we are the only one in Kansas. So obviously we get more of that research funding and um, professors are literally flocking to KU to be able to teach students and um, help with those research opportunities as well. We are very part of the AAU. Um, it allows us to expand further in our academics as well as our study abroad. We do have um, a a 28% student abroad, goodness, I'm just falling over my words today. Uh, we have a 28% of our student population studies abroad, which is three times the national average. We love when our students study abroad. Um, we have the KU core, which is more of our general education courses, but it really makes it to where you get to decide what you want to study. So rather than only one or two options for that general education course, we have six. You know, so uh, it gives you that ability to really uh, choose your own adventure, create your own experience. Um, we've got over 400 areas of studies and um, research opportunities starting from your freshman year. Uh, Lawrence, I love to talk about Lawrence. It's one of my favorite parts about we are a top 10 college town with a population of about 90,000. We have something for everyone. You're looking at Massachusetts Street right now, which is our entertainment district, but we've got shops. Um, obviously, like the entertainment pieces, we've got all of our food. I've been at, I've been in Lawrence for over two years and still have not tried every restaurant. So, you know, those things that make you feel like you're at home, that's what Lawrence can do for you. Um, we do have over 500 miles of hiking and biking trails. We have Clinton Lake, which is a beautiful um, 
massive lake that you can go to um, on your time off. And there's just tons of opportunities at KU. So um, whether that's um, going and finding new shops, we don't have any malls in Lawrence. So we really like to uh, prioritize that small business, um, small uh, shop, small support, small businesses at KU. Um, we also have, are located in a really great place. So Lawrence sits about 20 minutes east of Topeka, which is the state capital for any of our political science interests, um, and 45 minutes east uh, or west of Kansas City, rather. Um, so if you're looking for sports or um, just that more metropolitan area, um, Lawrence is the area for you. And lastly, the Jayhawk identity, which is probably my also one of my favorite parts. Obviously, I love KU, but um, we do have over 350,000 alumni worldwide. Um, the best thing about being a Jayhawk is that KU is the only place you can be a Jayhawk. So um, unfortunately, our bird is not real, but he is a cutie, obviously, and he is uh, really makes us stick out as an institution. Um, KU is the only place you can be a Jayhawk, be in a top 10 college town, and be a part of the AAUs. We really are a unique experience. Uh, my favorite part about being at KU is that I could be on the coast of North Carolina while being while going to KU, and you can still um, hear someone yell rock chalk from across the way. So um, great place to be. Here's a, a few of our, this is our assured admissions requirements. So 3.25 GPA on a 4.0 scale with no test scores or an ACT uh, score with that 2.0 GPA. We are test optional. Um, so no requirements for those ACTs or SAT scores, but um, for our professional schools or university honors program, you would still um, need that. Um, our scholarships are so unique this year. We actually went GPA only with scholarships. So I wanted to include this slide. Um, I'll leave that there for a second, but this is our in-state and then out of state um, GPA only scholarships, which are just huge. Um, you really have the opportunity to gain so much more money just from your GPA weighted or unweighted, whichever one benefits you more. We do have a few visit options as well. Um, our Jayhawk days, rising or rising senior days and junior days. Um, we offer different, different webinars as well as different events. Visit.ku.edu is the perfect place to go for that. Um, and yeah, if you have any other questions, I would love to answer them. But again, my name is Emily and I'd be more than happy to answer your questions. Um, I didn't have deadlines on here, so I wanted to say that really quick, but um, our priority deadline for scholarships is December 1st. So um, you can apply whenever, but December 1st is that uh, major deadline we'd like you to stick to in order to get those scholarships. So let me know if you have any questions. Thanks so much. Thank you so much, University of Kansas. We'll have University of Northern Colorado join us. Oh, the technology. Thank you. Welcome. Um, thank you all for listening. It's been fun being able to listen to everybody. So take all in everyone who is listening. I give a brief disclaimer before I start chatting about our institution, just to let you know that my job is to educate. And so as you're listening to this, just take everything in. You got to feel it in your heart of what school you're going to be going to, um, what school you feel like you're going to belong. And so I'm here to talk about the University of Northern Colorado. My name is Jose David, and I'm actually a recent uh, alumni as well of the university and now work as an admissions counselor. So loved it that much. I wanted to keep working for the admissions office uh, since I've been there for, for a little bit. But we are uh, the most affordable research institution in Colorado, about 10,000 undergraduate students. 100 undergraduate programs and a 27 average class size. That's a little bit of size sizing for the school. Lots of one-on-one -on -one attention. We started off as an institution that was a uh, state normal school, the only state normal school in Colorado. So first and foremost, we were a school for educators, for teachers, a school that taught teachers. And that has kind of kept going through everything when, uh, in our philosophy. So our philosophy for education uh, is our faculty, our teachers, um, be, making sure that they follow this, the hands-on education, experiential learning, so many different opportunities to make sure that you put what you're learning out into the real world, um, as we like to say. These top 10 programs that you see on your screen are our most enrolled programs at our school. Um, there's a few programs, that, uh, for example, like our performance and some music programs that are audition-based, that they have caps, so um, they wouldn't be on a list of most enrolled uh, when you're looking at everything. Uh, but these are just some of those things that you're looking at. And compared to peer institutions in Colorado here, 
Let me move this a little bit. Okay, uh, UNC scores higher for learning and effective teaching. Um, with that, as you're looking at everything, I just like to make sure that people know that our faculty, that was one of the reasons I chose UNC to begin with. Um, I wanted to make sure that I didn't feel like a number. So I uh, that's one advice that I give to everyone to make sure as you're looking at your schools that that's one of the things that you ask faculty and what, what they're doing for you. Housing and dining, we have 17 residence halls, uh, there are 3,000 students living on campus. Greeley living is very affordable as well, and your first year is the only year you have to live on campus. If you would like to live on campus for further years, you're more than welcome to live. It's very convenient for students, uh, but with Greeley housing being very affordable, a lot of students choose to live out, outside, so that puts us at the 3,000 students living on campus for that reason, and the learning communities range and uh, but in being in a floor with all business majors, all nursing majors, you can be in a floor with education majors. Um, there is uh, a floor uh, dedicated for LGBTQ community as well. And then we also have pet friendly floors. So you can bring a dog or a cat as long as it's 40, 40 pounds or less to be able to be there. And then 10 plus dining locations and growing. We keep growing with a lot of what that is about. Campus resources is another big thing. There's so much to talk about when we talk about resources. So we actually are some big numbers to think about as well. So 43% first generation at our campus as well here in Greeley, Colorado as well as uh, we have 36% students of color. So we have the Cesar Chavez Cultural Center, the Marcus Garvey Cultural Center for students who identify as black or in the uh, African uh, diaspora as well. Um, we also have Native American Student Services the, um, and the Asian and Pacific American Student Services. All of these cultural centers and resource centers that uh, we're mentioning, they have uh, these seven buildings where you can actually just make a lot, a lot, a lot of uh, personal experiences, connections, they buy even buy food for you to be able to use off of like the pantries and cook alongside the staff. And then we have a lot of academic resources with tutoring services, writing center, uh, a lot of different um, resources in that range as well, as well as our counseling center and our rec center. And none of it is additional cost. All of it is included with your tuition. So keeping that in mind as well. Tuition wise, here's just something, some numbers to keep in mind. Um, these numbers uh, as probably a, a lot of our other colleagues are looking at when, when you look at that and do include some other transportation stuff or books. And so they can fluctuate and go being able to go down. Um, and the housing and meals numbers that you're looking at there as well uh, include a tier two um, and a, the 14 meal plan that we have. Some deadlines here on the side for priority, as well as the scholarship deadlines, merit scholarships, we are test optional. Um, so we are only looking at your GPA. Your GPA is going to be what grants you these scholarships that you are given um, every single year as you move forward. And the UNC scholarship deadline, that um, that is a very important thing to look at as well, because we have other uh, scholarships that you can look at applying to. Um, so as you're looking at that, make sure that you don't miss those deadlines. The And how to apply, you can do a VR or a bear app, but we also accept the common app. $50 application fee. Um, first year students submit a transcript and the transfer students submit college transcripts and may need the high school information. Um, with all of that said and looking at everything that you're, that you're looking at schools combined, here's some info for me. Uh, please take a little picture. Uh, I love the school. So a lot of the times if it sounds like I'm just too excited or it's very salesy, like I mentioned, it's not. It, it's a very big thing that we have a good vibe here on campus to make sure that everybody who feels like this is the right place, it is. And with Colorado being an incredible state, this is a little bit of where we're located. So um, we are not too far from, from a lot of things that are going on and there's lots to do here in Greeley. So uh, let me know if you have any questions about program specifics, uh, my personal student experience while I was here, anything that we can help make your decision better, just let, uh, reach out. My information will be in the chat as well. Thank you all so much. Um, I would like for everyone to uh, join uh, excuse me, cut their mics on and join with their video as we go through a quick question answer session. Um, I'll start with Marquette University first. What advice would you give someone going through the college search process? Advice I would give someone is to just stay calm. It is a stressful time. Um, you know, you have a lot of different schools that you could be applying for that you're interested in, but stay calm and know that 
not even just like Marquette, but I think admission counselors all around the globe, we're here to help you. We're here to assist you. We're here for you. We want you to find your place. We want you to find your home away from home on whatever campus it may be. Um, so stay calm and know that you have people behind you um, and you'll, you know, you'll get there when you get there. Also, but don't procrastinate as well, but um, just make sure you're taking the steps necessary to ensure you know, you lock yourself in for four years um, at one of our institutions or two or four years, um, you don't have to lock yourself in, but uh, to just prepare um, to go to one of our institutions and kind of find that home. All right, thank you. University of Missouri or Mizzou, what's one thing you want students to remember about your school? There's so many things. Um, I think that iconic part of being a tiger, as I mentioned, is the birthplace of homecoming. So we really have uh, a soft spot in our hearts for tradition and history on campus and homecoming is our favorite, uh, our favorite tradition. And it actually involved the University of Kansas who's with us today. Um, so way back in 1911, we had a big football game against KU. Our uh, athletic director reached out to all those alumni and said, come back to your academic home, cheer on the Tigers. There was a bonfire and a parade and the game ended in a riveting three to three tie. But uh, the tradition has stuck. It's gotten bigger and better every year for 110 years running. And it truly is uh, something that you just have to be there to experience. Or like we say in the, in the show me state, you know, we are the show me state, come see things. Um, if you come in for a visit, come in for uh, late September, early October, that's really when you have that special uh, vibe on campus, that, that true homecoming spirit. So um, yeah. All right. Thank you very much. Goldsmith University, <clears throat> sorry, Goldsmith University of London. What is <clears throat> one myth you'd like to debunk on the college admissions process? Um, well, I think a big, <clears throat> excuse me, a big myth that um, maybe many students hold is that colleges are, are looking for reasons to reject them. Um, when in fact, we're kind of looking for reasons to admit you. Um, so I, uh, especially with the UK, like our application requirements are very transparent. Um, you can email me or any other UK representative with any questions you have, we will answer them. We will do everything in our power to help you as much as possible to get into the college of your choice uh, and one that's a good fit for you. Um, so I think that's like one big myth that um, I'd like to bring up. Thank you. IE University, what advice would you give someone going through the college search process? Um, I think, you know, I really loved uh, the answer that the first rep gave about staying calm and, you know, making space and time and understand that it will be a bit stressful. You are going into something that you've never done before. So it is a learning process for everybody. And like we'll mention, we're all here to help you. Um, but the biggest thing that I would say is actually make an email with like a Gmail account that's specifically for colleges. So when you go to um, learn about a school, sign up for something like this. That way, all the communications that you get from either of us as reps will go into one place and it won't overwhelm your other email accounts. Um, and then the other thing that I would like to add is please look abroad. It usually tends to be quite affordable. Um, you know, we are globalized as a society in the world. Um, and it's really, really important to kind of understand other cultures and other points of view. Um, but I will leave it at that. Thank you. Thank you. The University of Kansas, what's one thing you want students to remember about your school? Absolutely. Thank you so much. Great answers from every other rep. Honestly, I'm, this is like such a great group. Um, I'd say one thing is just the pride, loyalty, and traditions that are attached to the University of Kansas. Um, it's what brought me here. I, I, I went to the University of Kansas because of the admissions presentation, um, listening to this sort of poem we have attached to our school, uh, a spoken word poet, just really put experience into words, which is so hard to do sometimes. Um, being at this huge institution, uh, walking down Jayhawk Boulevard and seeing all the different students um, and just putting all of that together, going to a, a Jayhawk basketball game, uh, walking under the Campanile at graduation, just uh, I am proud to be a Jayhawk. And so that's something that I really value when it comes to going to an institution. But, um, you know, again, come to campus and we can we can show you why we're proud to be at this school too. Thank you. And the University of Northern Colorado, what is one myth you'd like to debunk about the on the college admissions process? I really like the previous answer. So kind of piggybacking on some of that in regards to looking for reasons to admit. Um, 
a lot of the times we we tend to have that conversation when someone maybe doesn't have all those uh, matching qualities or whatnot for an institution. It's really all about wanting the students to be successful. So as you're looking at, at schools and as you're looking at everyone, I think um, making sure that you don't think that people are like trying to to be elitist uh, from that. I think a lot of the times uh, the majority, the cases is that they're trying to find ways to make sure that people are there. So that, that was kind of what I was ge gearing with that. And that uh, another myth as well is if people can't tell a little bit of with our interactions as reps is that we're not here also trying to be like vampires trying to get all students. We wanna find students who match all of our schools, our universities. So um, some folks will feel at home at different places and so, really ask all those tough questions because no one's trying to convince you because uh, then that doesn't help retention either. So we're all in the, <laughs> we're all in a good place in trying to make sure that we help each other out. Okay. Thank you all so much for um, joining us today. <clears throat> Um, when the window closes, there will be a link to a very quick five question survey. We'd appreciate any feedback you can provide. And we, we encourage you to check back, the, back to the schedule and sign up for more sessions. You'll be able to find this session's recording as well as all of the other session recordings at strivescan.com forward slash GPACAC. Thank you.